Today is going to be a great day. We're going to be covering advanced framing, optimum value engineering. This is, I think, my favorite part of the whole construction process is the framing. Linda, you can take it from all the frilly stuff after that. But uh, what specifics do we really want to cover in today's uh, section? We want to look at some of the actual construction details as far as framing, connections, how we decide what um, type of material we use, how they're all put together so that we get the best use of the material. We're back at the uh, West Des Moines Green Home. We've just finished our third session with the professionals and the homeowners and we wanted to come out to the site and go over a few more things, a uh, little bit more detail um, and be sure and introduce Dan, the job superintendent uh, on the site. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier, I don't think any of us could be happier with the job that uh, Dan and the crew is doing right now and how, especially how clean it is. I've said it 10 times now, maybe <laughs> 11. Uh, how nice and clean everything is and, and, and following the prints and everything's looking good. But some of the things we really want to highlight, let's go ahead and start with the floor. Um, the floor joists that were put in were eye joists, uh, manufactured uh, materials, but then it was uh, sheeted with Advantech flooring. It's, uh, it's an upgrade of a standard OSB. You can tell by some of the labeling that it has a limited 50-year uh, warranty. But also a nice thing about this particular uh, brand of sheeting is it holds up very well uh, during rains and high moisture. So we don't have that puffiness that you might see sometimes around some of the seams if it's been wet. You don't have uh, any uh, budding up, any swelling along any, any joints or anything. And this makes it pretty easy for a, for a regular framer and carpenter as well because all of the on centers are labeled 1619.2 and 24 inches on center. So even a homeowner uh, with very limited experience could put this product down in the right manner. Dan, you went ahead and this was all glued and screwed or glued and nailed? Glued and nailed. Glued and nailed. So um, why'd, you, why'd you go ahead and glue this? I mean, I mean you, besides just, you know, we always used to just nail it. Why did, you, why did you glue this? It keeps the squeaks out of the floor. And okay. Here's better to the eye joists. Yeah, and it makes a lot stiffer floor, doesn't it? Right. Um, so, You've got about the perfect floor system to work off of right now. And, and to make this building more energy efficient, what, what they did is when they stood the walls up, they used a uh, structural adhesive uh, that we normally would just use to bond the sheeting down to the floor joist. But in this case, they used it when they stood the walls up. So the bottom plate sticks to the floor so that right underneath this area, they, this was just a guiding nail when they set the wall up. And that'll be coming out later. But this bottom plate then is sealed to the floor. So when we do a blower test uh, later on, it's a pretty good possibility we're not going to have any air leakage along that spot. And in some older homes, that's a significant air loss. So we, we gain a lot of energy efficiency right there. So when we move from the plate up into the walls, this might look like a long ways apart for, uh, for most people, but the house is framed at 24 inches on center. And at 24 inches on center, we allow more insulation, less wood, and uh, it, 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 you know, there's, there's some concerns I know sometimes about, they think, well, the wood's too far apart. If you get thrown into it, you're gonna dent the sheetrock, you're gonna do this. Those are just uh, really uh, a non-concern for us. We're really looking at a high-performance wall. On the outside of the studs, there's one-inch extruded polystyrene, which is Dow Styrofoam. Now, with the one-inch foam on the outside, what it does is it really reduces the amount of thermal bridging through the stud. So when it's cold outside, let's say it's zero. If it's zero outside and it's 70 inside, there's a, there's a vast temperature difference. So what the foam will do is it slows down and sometimes pretty much stops the heat transfer from outside so the foam stops it and then this piece of wood then doesn't act so much as a thermal bridge because really wood isn't that much of, a, of an insulator. And if we ever look at a house with just, say, wood sheeting on the outside, you'll be able to see every one of these studs very well. You'll be able to uh, sometimes even see where the drywall is screwed into the stud because of the cold coming through. Now, when so we go up above the stud, you can see the two top plates, a top plate, double top plate. And then we have a gable uh, truss. Now, with this gable truss, and this wall is considered non-bearing. And since it's non-bearing, it means it's really not carrying much of a load except itself. So as, as we look over to the uh, a window framing uh, in the other end of the room, as you can see, there's no beam. There's no header up above the window. There's really no need to have that. 
Well, one of the things that Bill pointed out is that we have a gable end truss here, so we don't have any roof load on this window. Um, when I first started in the business, what we would do is put a header over every window, whether it was carrying load or not. Uh, we see here, since it's not carrying any of the roof load, we can use a regular framing spacing and down below the window use the regular framing spacing. One thing we do have to pay attention to is when the window is in, it'll be trimmed out. So we need to make sure that we've got framing to carry that nail pattern as we put the, the window in and the window trim in there. So we've turned this stud flat so we have a nailer, but then we can still get insulation in there. So we're blocking that thermal bridging again.